and we tribute to something I shall never forget. Unconditional war on poverty in America. Members of the Board of Regents, ladies and gentlemen, I believe this new museum will excite a thirst for knowledge and promote it for all the people. The opening of a museum does not change the world, but the opening of a museum articulates what's out there. Here, young children see the ripe fruit of America's historical harvest. And so to open a museum with the name of the Museum of History and Technology suggests a story where technology is going to be more important than it has been before. That's the way you get progress. Why not open our historical doors and let the visitors see what kind of people we really are? The original United States National Museum was a building next door to the Smithsonian Castle, opened in 1881. No one had any sense that a museum was supposed to do anything more than put things in glass cases. And maybe if they kind of went together, that would be a good thing. But sometimes they didn't even go together very well. The place by that time had gotten the nickname The Nation's Attic and it was kind of dark and dingy. And you had a sense that it was dusty, and, and it was dusty. And this seemed to satisfy the popular interest in museums for a very long time. The firm that was chosen to design the new Museum of History and Technology was called McKim, Mead & White. I was 19 years old and I worked for McKim, Mead & White. McKim, Mead & White was known for its classical revival. So now we're faced with, we have to come up with a design. And the buildings on the mall have colonnades, which is a procession of columns that define the classical look. And if you go back far enough, all of the Smithsonian buildings are in brownstone and very heavy masonry bearing walls. This was a unique building because it wasn't made out of stone, it was made out of steel. And the stone is just the cladding that covers the steel. And now all of a sudden you have this building that has rigid, sharp edges that are modern, but the materials are classic. And the shape is classic, it's rectangular. And then Jose de Devera showed up at the office and he had this sketch of what he planned on doing. And then we worked on the location of where this chrome modern sculpture is gonna be. It was a pivotal building, in my opinion, on the mall. The flexibility that the building had and the image that it gave. The new museum opened in 1964 if you can judge by the visitation, the public loved it. They had been waiting all their lives for this museum to open. When you name a museum a museum of history and technology, you're clearly trying to do something new. Museums traditionally were most of all art museums, that is paintings or sculpture or works of art. Or they were collections of what were called curiosities or wonders. And it's just kind of a collection of stuff that you can't throw out. Seems important, but you don't quite know why. Then you have another tradition coming into the 20th century, which are these World's Fairs. And they display what is new, what is different, what's cutting edge. So you have this futuristic orientation, and then you have these old-fashioned museums. And you pull them together when you name a museum of history and technology. I think when the museum opened, the flag and the pendulum really provided two kind of wonderful symbols that gave some amount of coherence, one in the history area, one in the technology area. 
And in retrospect, I think it worked. And the, the aha experience of walking into the museum and explaining to your kids, you know, it's not the pendulum that's moving, it's the building that's moving and the earth that's moving. I mean, those are exciting ways to introduce you to all of this interesting subject matter in a compelling way. When I came to the museum, it was a really yeasty time. And what I mean there is that there was a kind of a weird assemblage of antiquarians, historians, enthusiasts, but there were no artists among them. It was only really in the 50s and the 60s that this sort of new group of people, the, the artists, the impresarios, really came into the museum field. And they sort of brought a totally different perspective. They were interested in story rather than object, in how do we excite and engage people. I think one of the things that museums have really learned a lot about since the time that the Museum of History and Technology opened is that you really have to focus on the visitor. You've got the content but they're the ones having the experience. The Smithsonian has always been seen as the nation's attic. To me, that's not going to go away. The key is, how do you turn an attic into a treasure house? Yes, start with an attic, but then make it a treasure house of experience. Ensure that everybody who visits the museum comes across some object they never expected there. Find themselves deeply moved. And probably say, why am I crying? Well, that's because you're communicating with yourself you know, where you come from and where your community comes from. And th those are great moments. They only happen in museums. <laughs>